This mess of wires in my panel here is an Emporia View Gen 2. I brought it with me from my old house. I installed it a couple years ago and really liked it. But they sent me a new one. This is the Gen 3, brand new version. So I'm going to actually install this and give you a comparison between the two. Coming up. All right, while I do this unboxing, let me give you highlights of the differences between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 and the improvements they made. First is networking that now supports an Ethernet connection. So if you were having trouble with Wi-Fi in the past, you can now run an Ethernet cable to it and not have to worry about the antenna. The branch sensor ports are now consolidated on a single side and all surfaces have been flattened so that it provides more installation options in tight spaces. The energy monitor is now UL certified, and the current transformers are also UL certified. The big change is accuracy. So this is more consistently accurate across a range of load power factors. The voltage channels are now independently measured, eliminating uh, error caused by adjacent channels. And the voltage channel measurement is now isolated from the rest of the system. So it's all about better accurate measurements. In addition, the CT connections have been upgraded to a more secure and reliable screw terminal, which I'll show you in a bit. The screw terminals allow the power harness and CT wires to be trimmed to reduce clutter in the panel. All right, here you can see the Gen 2 on the right and the Gen 3 on the left. And uh, the Gen 3 appears to be considerably bigger. But one thing that you'll notice is that the wires all connect from the top and it's got a much bigger connection on the side. You'll also notice that it has a, an Ethernet jack as opposed to the Gen 2 is just Wi-Fi. So in situations where you want to place this someplace where you can't get a good Wi-Fi signal, you could run an Ethernet cable to it if you wanted to. The other thing that's very different is these the CTs. These are called uh, current transformers and the wiring is very different. First of all they're they're considerably bigger again well not much but they are bigger which you know interestingly enough that was a lot of stuff in here as it was so for us to put even bigger CTs in here that's um, I don't know well we're gonna see how it works but anyway the bottom line is they uh, they changed the way the wiring is done here. You can see this is two separate wires, whereas the other one was a unified wire. Now, two things about this. First of all, these are a little bit longer, the new wires, than the old one. But I think they had some problems with accuracy because of all these wires being next to each other. Whereas this, they've uh, isolated them, supposedly. And the connectors are different, too. Whereas these connectors are just like a little... Uh, mini jack that you could plug in and they don't really hold that well this one looks like it's um much more i don't know industrial looking and um hopefully it holds better the other thing is you could see those two little screws in there right if you want to you could actually shorten these because like i said they are a little bit longer than the old ones about three inches longer than the old ones and that's just going to be even more wire in your box there so you could shorten them, and uh, if you're really into cable management, that is something that you could do. The other thing that's nice is they've changed the labeling on the back of the CTs. So it's much clearer which direction they're supposed to go in. And what, what happens here is the wire goes through this. Here, let me show you. I'll just use a piece of wire. The wire goes through this like this. And it clamps onto one of your wires. And you can see the label on the top says breaker that way. So the orientation that this is going to be in is like this. All right, it's always going to point to the breaker. I don't know how well you can see this, but on the back of the old one, there's a K and an arrow to an L. K was the line and L was the load. Okay, and the new one, they just put a, a, an arrow that says, hey, point this to the breaker. So it's definitely a little bit easier to understand. Another big difference about the Gen 2 is that it has connections on all sides of it. Whereas the Gen 3 has the bottom has nothing on it. So it's intended so you could put this at the bottom of your panel and it could actually sit flat and all the connections either come from the top or come from the side. 
The antenna is virtually the same, so that works the same way if you're going to use Wi-Fi. And of course, it's got the big Mama CTs. These are the ones that go for the main line coming in. Now when you buy it, you could buy it with just the two, two or three big ones to measure all the energy in the entire house. Or you can buy eight circuits like this. Or you can buy 16. That's the way this one is. So this one has the full 16. And I have more than 16 circuits in here. So I'm going to have to pick and choose which ones I decide to monitor. Now one of the other things you need to decide is you have to be able to get power to this unit. And it has to provide power from both phases. In other words, if you have two mains coming in from the top, which I do, well then you need to provide power from those two mains. And the way that I'm choosing to do that, because I have room in my breaker panel, I'm choosing to do that with a double pole breaker. I bought a 15 amp double pole breaker. They're not very expensive. And uh, I have the old one hooked up to that, but I'm gonna swap that out and put the new one on. The wiring harness has four wires on it. The black and the red are the ones that are going to get connected to my circuit breaker, the double circuit breaker. The blue wire is if you have a third phase, which I don't, uh, that's going to actually get connected to the neutral bar with the white wire. So the white and the blue get connected together to the neutral bar. The other two need to get power. And you can either get power from a separate circuit breaker or you can pigtail off of a circuit breaker. I have the wiring harness connected to the breaker here, the double breaker, and at this point I am ready to turn off the power in the panel. It's always a good idea when you open your panel to turn off the power because those two plates in there are live, and uh, if anything hits them, you could cause a short circuit, really cause burns, and potentially even die. So I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna turn off my whole house, and the way that you do that, you know, let me turn some light on so that I don't lose, I'm gonna be in the dark. But the way that you do that, you don't just throw the top breaker, which is your, your main. Now your main may not be in this panel, by the way. It could be outside by your meter, it could be in the sub panel, something like that. But anyway, the way you do it is you turn off each individual circuit first. and then you throw the main. All right, I can test it with my tester here, and you can see that these are now dead, so that's good. But the wires at the top are always hot, so we always have to be careful of these. So I'm just gonna very carefully take off all these CTs and put new ones on. So one little note while I'm working on these branch current transformers, when you have a double pole breaker, that is typically a 240 volt circuit, you only have to use one CT for that circuit. You just put it around one leg, and then in the app you actually specify a, a two for the multiplier, because it uses double the wattage. Okay, I have all my CTs installed now, and my breaker is back installed here too. So at this point, I'm gonna turn on my main, and then I'm going to throw each one of these circuits individually, one at a time. All right, I have my power harness installed. And one of the other things I did while the power was off, I took the white and the blue wire and I attached it to the neutral bar back here behind the CT. Now I'm going to take each one of the CT wires and connect it to the view. And the way that I do it is I'm just going to number them like this. You know, that'll be one, two, three, four, five, and work my way down. That's the way that I do it. All right, power is on. Got a little green blinky light. So now I'm going to set it up in the app. All right, after you get the view connected to the Wi-Fi through the app, then you can go in and name each one of the circuits and tell it what kind of circuit it is. And uh, this is an important part, but it is a pain in the neck. It's only done once, and when you're done, you will have a nice comprehensive list of all your circuits so that it all makes sense to you.
Alrighty, this is it. Uh, the Gen 3 view is installed completely. And I've got all of my circuits set up. And now I'm going to let it burn in for a little bit and leave it like this. So that if I find any circuits that I want to tweak, I can do that before I put the panel back together. Eventually. Alright, this is the finished product before I cover it up. You can see I did a little bit of wire management here. I put things under zip ties. I didn't cut any wires or shorten them or anything like that. Just use zip ties to uh, make sure they stay out of the way so I can get the cover back on. And I did tweak the circuits so everything is where I want it now. And it's all well and good. All right, the cover is back on. Everything is good. And you'd never know it was in there. Okay, here you can see I'm inside the Emporia app, and if I expand on my View 3, you can see all of my circuits. And you'll also see that I have usage, but I also have net production, and that's because I have a solar system here. And it's a cloudy day, so I'm not generating much solar, but I am generating enough to cover everything that is being used right now. That's why it says net production. So I'm actually sending 500 watts out to the grid right now. Now you don't have to have solar to use the view. In fact, my last house did not have it. All I had was the circuits that you would see here. And what I liked about it then is it enabled me to see exactly what was being used on every given circuit. And it enabled me to find some phantom power that was being used for some power supplies that were plugged in and, and whatnot. And it also enabled me to make sure I could, I could set rules up here to see if for some reason my garage refrigerator stopped working without my notice. This basically says my whole house is using 576 watts right now. And the solar system is generating about 1,000, maybe 1,100 watts between the two of them. And so the excess solar is what's being considered as net production. So right now, my solar is covering all of my usage and sending 400 to 500 watts to the grid. But if I go for, let's say, for example, for day, I've pulled more power in from the grid than I've sent out to the grid. So I use 1200 watts from the grid today. And now if I look at it, and, and one of the reasons for that is overnight I was charging my Tesla. Now this is the previous day, the 16th, and you can see I didn't charge the car and it was a nice sunny day. So I had an awful lot of production. I sent 43 kilowatt hours to the grid and I only used five from the grid. So my net production was 38 kilowatt hours. So that's really helpful for you to be able to see not only what is the solar system generating, but what is it costing me in electricity. Now for each one of these, if I click on any one of them, like I can see what my refrigerator is using. In fact, I can also go by the minute and see what it's been using over time. Or I can go by the hour or by the day. You can also change your unit of measure to currency because it knows where I am. Here you can see it actually generated $5 of electricity. That's for one day. That's pretty darn good because that could be $150 a month credit if you think about it. But of course, I do use electricity as well. But this gives me that ability to look at it and say, hey, let's even look at the month. I Right now, for the month of April, I'm only halfway through, but I just installed this a couple of weeks ago. So I'm already at a $10 credit for my electricity generation. So when my bill comes, I could compare what I'm seeing here versus what's in the bill. And I can tweak it and make sure that I'm, I'm able to figure out where's all my electricity, where's all my power going. You can see the Tesla costs $3.78 to charge. Now, if for whatever reason your circuits, you know, you don't have enough CTs, if 16 is not enough for you, you can add smart plugs. These are Emporia smart plugs. Each one of these has an internal CT. So I can do a couple of things. Number one, I can put this on a computer in my office if I want to see what the consumption is for that specific computer, even though my office is on here. Another thing I can do is if there's a circuit that's not on here and I don't have a CT on it, I can still put smart plugs 
on devices on that circuit, like a refrigerator or something like that, and it will tell me the usage on here for that device. And if you have an electric car, you can also get a separate EV charger from Emporia that integrates with this as well. And then I wouldn't need to use a CT for the Tesla charger the way that I did it here. All right, so what are your thoughts about the Emporia View Gen 3? I really like it. I, I think they've made some good improvements to it that make it worthwhile. But I gotta say, if you don't have anything and you're looking for a recommendation on which one to buy, there's nothing wrong with the View Gen 2. I was using it for the past three years and it was fine. This one has some major improvements. I would always recommend the latest and greatest, but if you can get a good deal on a 2 and it's gonna be a, you know, one way or the other because of the, the money, then go for it. Um, in either case, you can't, you can't fix what you can't measure. So that's why I think it's really important if you wanna manage the energy usage in your house, this is really a good way to do it. And if you're a landlord, you can use this for, you know, to, to measure the electricity being used by each one of your units and you can even charge back your, your tenants. There's a lot of things you can do with this. So I like the product. I'll put links to it down in the video description below. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be the first to know when new videos are posted. Look for Handy Dad TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit the website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information.